Let's begin. Uh, do any of our uh, uh, guests today have? Uh, Should we call the meeting to order? I did oh, call can. the meeting to oh. order. Well, I think well, we were carefully observing the the struggle with the camera. <laughs> yeah. That's why we're supposed to have a gavel. Ooh. So, um, do any of our our guests uh, have any uh, comment today? No, we, we will uh, we'll introduce ourselves then. I'm Chris Palamas, uh, Chair of the Disability Commission. Marie Westward, ADA Coordinator for the City. Judy Kimberly, Secretary for the Commission. City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge, Vice Chair. Leticia Warren, me Member. Jean Page, Member. James Winston, Member. I'm a Cornwall Member. Good. Uh, now, if you have had a chance to uh, take a look at the uh, minutes for the last, for the uh, May 15th uh, meeting. Vote to approve. Second it. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, the meetings, uh, the minutes are approved. So, um, Ben uh, Kalish from the, the Forbes Library has uh, joined us. And, and Ben, I think since you're both going to talk about comments that came up in the advisory, uh, but your comments are also relative around assistive listening, we'll combine those. Okay. okay. I'd be happy to talk about that. Does your it advice. matter where I am? Is it important that I get somewhere in front of the I think it would be nice if you could sit in front of the microphone so we can hear it. Yeah, yeah, maybe the... It's good to have yeah. that microphone. Yeah. Good yeah. yeah. Hello, I'm Ben Kalish from Forbes Library, um, and we um, have our Disability Advisory Board um, there, um, and the um, main reason I'm here is to talk about the West Street um, pedestrian crossing, um, which people have brought up many times before, but in particular, um, we've had some patrons request an audible crossing there. There's a pedestrian signal, but it's visual only, so if you have low vision, it's a lot harder to cross. So that is something that um, we would very much like if the city um, could address that issue. Yeah, we're going to be, um as we've been updating the self-evaluation and transition plan for the city, yeah. I do hope to have that, that report done in um, around mid-July, finishing up other work that I'm doing, and we'll get to that report. But in terms of the priorities, that, that intersection is obviously very high. Because we have so many concerns, but I think the additional piece that you've added to it is that request for, yes. um, for an audio signal that it, it at least would be useful um, how to deal with those complex uh, slopes and, and turns. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that certainly would be an element. To, right, and it, I, I'm simply not sure if that part had been brought up before. I know that the, the crossing has been brought up before, but this was something that was particularly requested and makes a lot of sense to me. And it had not been brought up before, which is why it is good to hear it, uh, hear it emphasized. I think when when we um, when we present to the to the mayor and then to council, it's going to be very important to have your seconding and the presence of you know of representation of your your advisory committee too. I, I don't know. There, there undoubtedly been discussions about the. The intersection is uh, obviously a, a, a very, very difficult point in the in the city. But it, it, at least the auditory controls are are, uh, are, are there are pretty achievable partial solutions. Are there any buzzards or people with hearing problems on the pole? Well, that's what he's on the advisory board. That's what he's doing. Yes. Also, I has been brought up before. You have a single crosswalk You're coming out of Ford's library. You take a left, go on to Green Street. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely nothing there. 
And to me, that is very, very dangerous. So we need some form of visibility there for people who are crossing that sidewalk. There's nothing at all. Well, it's a crosswalk. It's just a crosswalk. And I'll just say that years of living here and going to uh, frequent member forms, I, mean, I can tell you the cars come very, very fast. Yes. Uh, from west across the corner of uh, Green Street to the shootout. Yep. Uh, but really seems they come fast from, from West Street they uh, do. towards Fort Fly, right? Sometimes they're trying to make a lot of things and you gotta be careful there. And that's just driving mm -hmm. So I think when we're doing a transition plan that that should be included in it because this has been going on for several years now with many people complaining and Attorney Winston is absolutely correct. They fly by there. And I see every day, because I come down in North Thurston every day, it can be in the morning, it can be in the afternoon or in the evening. And you have a lot of tenants who live around that side area with small children. Mm -hmm. So I would look at both of those sites at the same time. I agree, because I, I don't want anybody to get hurt like get hit by a car, because I, I think they, I agree, I think they need to do something. Mm -hmm. Could you clarify though? We have, of course, we have the crosswalk up at the uh, up at the intersection. There is a crosswalk further back and down slope below Green Street. Um, yes, just at the corner of Green Street, but on the side of Green Street, farther from the library, there's a pedestrian crossing right. that has no signal at all. Um, the the thing that. Um, I particularly came here to speak about was the request that we add an audible signal to the existing signal um, where there is that someone closer to downtown um, yeah. on the corner with Elm Street. That's um, and I, I feel that's the priority in my mind partly because of the use it gets and partly because um, it's one that was particularly brought to my attention um, by a patron who um, is fully blind and um, that is her route to the library is at that crossing. Mm -hmm. And finally, because it is my hope that adding an audible signal there may be comparatively easy since there is already some infrastructure there. That said, getting to the library from the other side on West Street could also be considerably improved, and I would very much be in favor of that, mm -hmm. as I think would most people at the library. Yeah, I, I just wonder if, uh, if the whole area has ever been studied. But the most basic that you're requesting certainly seems to be, you know, not a complicated fix. Mm -hmm. That's a matter of adding technology on, so. And I will say, um, if the um, commission here can, if there's anything the library can do to help you make the case, please let us know. That's what we would like to do when we're presenting to the to the mayor and to council to to have your um, your second will be will be very useful. Great. I don't know what the process is, not having done this before, but we'll. We'll be finding our way over the next few weeks to, to doing that. So, is the board of trustees also involved coming to your meetings? I don't think a member of the board of trustees ever has come to our meetings. Have they been um, invited? And I do not believe that they have gotten more than the general invitation that is sent out. They they receive the emails that are an invitation to members of the library community. And I guess they receive two emails because there's um, also the one directed to the staff. But we can make sure that they get a special invitation. I will talk to um, Molly or Lisa, the director and assistant director of how Once we do the transition work of this, of having the full support of the Board of Trustees. As a counselor, I know mostly all of them. And they need us as counselors to help them, too, financially when they need money. But right now, we're looking at something that's very serious here. Not just that one little intersection. I'm talking about both. Mm -hmm. Okay, And I'm hoping that we can go after both. Is 
Is it part of the transition plan to assess other spots in the city that might need audio as well? Like, um, seems like I'm sure that if you if you can get to that intersection, there's lots of other intersections you might have to cross to that you might need that as well. And so, yeah, I mean, we, we can as well. You know, it's sort of for us to to pursue the scope of it, but this is where we're getting other public input. Part of the requirement is that there be opportunities for concerned persons to to um, you know to express their interest. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a report, present, but then we would like to want to have public hearing on it, mm -hmm. and in particular to clarify this, you know, which intersections would benefit at this point. And the city will be involved in that too because um, definitely the mayor would be involved in it, planning department would be involved in it. Well, and on and many levels, um, if the city um, becomes officially commits to becoming an age-friendly community as well, there, there are many reasons, not you know, there's the accessibility for all. Mm -hmm. um, so if we want to be walkable, and we want to, you know, we want to support walking, um, there are just many, many reasons to, it, you know, sort of do it right for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I'd like to take that the time in this process, we weren't just rushing to quickly do a checklist, right. but have these conversations unfold generate uh, you know community participation mm -hmm. and, uh, right. and have it continue in that way okay. at least on through the autumn right yeah I, I know there are other crosswalks but this one is important because it it's the route to the library which is very important in the city so we have people right well I guess what I'm getting at is speaking is that cross. if you have to if you, if they might only serve people who can get to that intersection safely and so if people are walking from greater distances and other major intersections aren't addressed they might not be able to get to this intersection you know I'm sort of thinking of is, is a larger picture in terms of accessibility for everyone who needs to walk through other intersections to get to this one well, that's one of one of the things we could request would be the identification now of where we have the signals. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, I, I agree yeah. to that too, because we not just look at Northampton; we need to look at Florence also. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because I'm hearing from people saying, "Well, the concentration is Northampton. It's not. We are part of Florence also." Well, Florence needs a part of Northampton. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and if we're going to deal with things piecemeal and lead, right, then, then it's yeah. sort of the squeaky right. wheel. No, much better. We'll identify where we have them and yeah. we can see where priorities, but but West Street is <laughs> no question. Is the single most oh, yeah. important and yeah. at this point dangerous intersection? Definitely. How about the Cat Eye Musa? I'm really surprised somebody has not gotten seriously hurt at that crosswalk that both Jim and I are yeah. talking about. Yeah, the lane cars went around that corner. Awful. Yeah. How about the coach? To the member of the public, they can come to the Marianne, I defer. Are we? Yes. No. I just wanted to say, as a frequent user of Ford's library, and I drive there because I live a mile and a half away, uh, I come out of the parking lot at all sorts of hours, and people are crossing the street in front of the exit. You know, every which way, there's not a walk, a crosswalk there, and I'm sure you're well aware of it. And that's the frustrating thing. The public, some people park their car on West Street right there, and uh, that's West Street. I think it's this. <laughs> Uh, and it's just frustrating because I'm more concerned about any of the best people. I may have about the traffic, but there's plenty of traffic coming into this town from, from uh, out west. Thank you. How about the cameras that you think they think? Thank you. Okay. Uh, ben, thanks for raising this. We will get a map of where we have 
but to add the, uh, the audible signals into the picture and for this particular intersection. But more generally, also one of the options we would have, we've had work studies to in the, in the past when we, when we get to the beginning of the, the year as students return to Smith, if we want to do and need to do some additional surveying or looking at other, other intersections or other discrete elements, um, we could consider doing it at that point. So I think it uh, would be a little tough to have the commission doing a lot more information gathering at this point. So thank you, Ben. But uh, the one other thing I, that you mentioned to me before the meeting that was significant, if you could just repeat your comment, you all purchased uh, and have um, uh, assistive listening system at the library, and it was suggested to you that any systems be compatible? Yes, yeah, so we have um, FM transmitters in our programming rooms as well as a portable transmitter, and therefore we also have receivers for the FM uh, assistive listening system. So it's something we have heard from the MBLC um, repeatedly that this is an opportunity, the, I'm sorry, the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. Um, uh -huh. who is the agency through which we received our grant with which we purchased the, this equipment. Um, but they very much encouraged, particularly the Shelley um, Kazada, who is, um, teaches a class at Simmons on um, accessibility in libraries. Um, this is her thing. Um, and she very much thinks that whenever a library has an assistive um, listening system, that that's a, a potential for collaboration throughout the community and that the more organizations within the community that share a system, the easier it is for that collaboration and that the receivers themselves, sometimes the transmitters if they're portable, but certainly the receivers, which are very small, can be shared. And that no one um, organization needs to have enough for the fringe cases when a lot need to be used if they can borrow them from other um, organizations within the community that share the same system. Um, I was talking to Marie earlier, and um, it sounds like there might be some purchases of the system, the listening system sometime soon. So there's a potential for some collaboration there. Right, and yeah, point well taken. Absolutely, compatibility of the system. So, you know, unless the technology were to make a leap and for some reason, but you know, I, I don't think that's it. So to, to look for um, you know, sharing across system compatibility. So thanks. Thank you. So issues on hearing. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next was the communication with the mayor regarding a block walkways and assistive listening systems. I spoke to Marie. I had sent a uh, communication to the to the mayor. And that was uh, the two points that were raised were um, one that we've identified a number of areas where assistive uh, listening systems are needed and those were at least uh, one portable system for use in meetings where no hardwired systems are available um, to repair and upgrade the system previously installed in city council chamber which is not uh, operable currently, and installation of a permanent hardwired system at the Academy of Music. So, you know, at, at least as a baseline, those two. Also, um, Lily Library. We had a budget hearing there. Awful. You've had hearings at Lily Library? Oh, I, by the way, I've lost all my hearing in my left ear. With the allergies, uh, I was just I had that problem uh, this sneezing year. and coughing, and, and this year is... Lily you know, Liger, we had a bunch of hearing. Yeah. Couldn't even hardly hear it. Red amplifier. So they could probably borrow Forbes's equipment. So the question is yeah. whether that would be a portable device useful or where they're ought to be hardwired. Right. Also, JFK, we have a, another budget hearing being held there, and I saw a resident actually cupping his ear. It's an 
listening to the mayor speaking on the microphone would be podium like this. Mm -hmm. I have problems doing that. See that one thing is going to be to get the systems in place. The other is going to be the procedures and get people used to using them consistently, making it you know, visible that there is signage that this is uh, available so people get used to and have the expectation that they will be able to hear at meetings. And that's the direction we want to go. So I think our recommendations are going to be kind of preliminary. There needs to be an assessment of probably finer how many in what locations, but we know that we have a need for at least portability and hardwired in certain places. That the number one hardwired is clearly important is the anatomy piece. And there we asked is there were apparently conversations in the past um, whether old minutes from the, uh, the commission would identify when those conversations took place. They were undoubtedly before the current executive director came into the academy of music. How about the um, Calvin Theater? Well, it's not owned by the city. Well, but that's a private second. sector. It's a private one, yeah. Yeah, they, they have an obligation also in the private sector. And where this has been done really well actually has been uh, you know, down in New York. If you go down to, to, you know, for shows in New York City now, they all have the systems. They've got their procedures well organized on, on how they use them. Um, we want to get the city to kind of lead the way. And yes, the Calvin and other venues should have them also. Okay. But as I understand, you didn't have a chance to discuss these issues. The other issue that I mentioned in my communication to the mayor um, was the uh, sidewalk blocked in particular by a uh, by a city vehicle. And I asked the, the mayor to please identify or pass on to a, a department director to identify the, the vehicle and the driver and inform us if there were when appropriate disciplinary action was taken. Uh, I think with your busy schedule, there was not a chance. To I can follow up on that though. Um, he, he got, he, he was, you did communicate it to him. So I just need to, I just need to ask um, his chief of staff if there was a follow up on that. Good. And I can let the board, uh, the commission know. Let us know on that and fairly soon. But what I'm trying to do on my time now, I'm finishing up my work with the Commonwealth at the end of the month, and then I can turn. We do have a, a rough preliminary draft of a, um, the report on the update, the, the, the core recommendations for the mayor and council. Um, I'll obviously, as we just get that draft refined, we'll share it here with the commission before we in any way finalize that draft. But I'm hoping that we can really move forward in, in July and have that process. Would well, there have a be document. any availability for a grant? What's that? For a grant. For a grant. For the listening. For the assistive listening. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for another grant, for the last few years, we've had grants to do some of the work. So I mean, we have people for any, any work city that, we want to that works in our departments that are very good at going after the list. But certainly to look for any any opportunities exactly. that are out there for, for, for grant funding. But, you know, under the law, the thing is this has to be, you know, that unless it constitutes an undue burden, uh, the city has to look to allocating the resources or have any various sub-budgets, like the sub-budgets for Academy of Music. We were told that the Academy has a uh, sub-capital uh, plan for future development. We want to see if this would be effective. I mean, as an example, North Library, they have a grant funding for elevator. Yeah. There's no money. No money. Right. So Mike Ryan, Judith Ryan, and a whole bunch of people got together and raised that money to put that elevator in there for people with disabilities. That was 
huge pot party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about the ramp in the back? Do you think we'll get one for the Karen music for the for the ramp in the back? The back back? What? You know where the stage is? Oh yeah. Then we want that to be to be obviously in, in the discussion with the academy um, in terms of overall needs. It would include that most definitely. Okay. Or next, you will follow up with the mayor. Yes. Um, accessibility, hmm. city website accessibility assessment. I have the preliminary uh, report from, from Rob Evely. Whether the city is changing systems or not, um, the information about the extent to which the website currently does or does not work in terms of the accessible elements is significant. So we can uh, copy and we'll distribute this at, at our next meeting. And it's, you know, it's a mixture. Um, efforts have been made in, in areas and there are other areas where technically there are, there are significant deficiencies yeah. on the website. That's not surprising. So it's a matter of organizing and then thinking through what are the steps forward. And generally, those are a matter not only of the purchasing of the uh, purchasing of the software that will be involved, but uh, uh, being sure that the uh, uh, the folks who are operating the system um, have completely adequate training so that they understand um, how to implement those standards. So I would assume, Chris, if you are talking about upgrading, which we've hired. At what, $200 was it or something? What was the cost you were hiring? It was up to $500. Okay. So we do now it's far have, less than that. which your employee told Ruth McGrath, that the city I'm is sorry, up. Uh, the city is up. I can't right. hear what you're saying. Oh, you can, we do as a mic. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so what I'm saying is I've been told today by Ruth McGrath that apparently your employee told her that the city is changing the websites throughout the city. So tomorrow I'll be making, so you understand that, you know what's happening. Correct? They're upgrading it. That's what yes. I mean, they're changing yes. it. So what I'm saying is here we have, and we paid for somebody to work tirelessly for us, so I think that we should be involved with MIS in the city who sets up our websites. I think they should be coming to a meeting here and seeing this report. I think it should be given to them. And the because person, yeah. MIS handles all our, our computers, our websites, everything in the city. So if we are upgrading or changing, they should be part of us. There's the, no question the, about the, it. The, people on the city's end who are, because I, I, what I understand is that the upgrade is happening through the company that- Right, but also MIS works with them. Oh, okay. Okay, yes. so they should be highly involved with Chris and this commission. Yeah, to say it's being upgraded is as vague as, you know, it, it could be any- It's been redesigned. Well, I'm gonna talk to tomorrow in the mayor's office, see exactly what's going on. If not, I'll call MIS. So, uh, could we at the next meeting then have um, have someone explain what's, it would be very helpful if we had any kind of written statement of what the uh, upgrade is gonna be. Um, I would like to have uh, Rob look at it. We approved up to 500, right. this, is, this is less than 500 oh, that, yeah. that he's done. But, but let's look, you know, what these systems, as, He's been working with the state and community colleges. It's been a matter not only of the software, but you know, generally that there is a structure of meeting with the senior um, information technology people in terms of uh, the procedures and the standard that you sure. right. set up and communicate. And that may be fully, it may be fully covered, but frankly, I don't have the technical skills. I don't either. Skills. I don't think any of us do. That's why we, we have to call on someone who's got <laughs> Right, and that's why we have MIS. They're all right. technicians and they're professionals. 
So yeah, so I what I think would be best is to have the the person who's overseeing it on that end that had one. have a discussion with this consultant. Is it a consultant? Yes. Yeah, okay. So that would make sense so that that they can get an understanding of what what the software company the the, the people who've designed it, if they understand what the needs are or if they're already meeting the need and we we can't we can't know, but that's why the consultant needs to talk to them. Like we, we, I think it really needs a professional to talk to them about what. But that's why I'm saying. Okay. Right, but I think we could just put the consultant in, in touch with. Right, and I'm going to talk with the head one director also because there should be total communication here. All right, this is the Makes city sense. we're looking at. Yeah. All right, who want who runs all our websites? Right, I And agreeing. Chris is working tirelessly. The whole commission. Sure. And we want it right. To facilitate this in a timely way, um, if you understand what the process is, I will, through the ADA coordinator, um, introduce you to the consultant. Yeah. And he's over at, at Smith at least once a week, so okay. he's in the city. And that you can you can do the sure. conversation. Yeah. Program. Yes, I will. We'll talk to you. It doesn't have to wait a month to figure out what's going on. Right. Yeah, definitely. Okay. That's good and timely. Accessibility improvements at City Hall and the Annex. What fun it was to go out for Arts Night and not to be able to get <laughs> City Hall. Um, you know, the work is moving forward. Um, it's to be completed by the end of the month. And I understood from, from Wayne that the um, the improvements uh, are being made. There's been some extension that the, the city is committed to some additional funds to secure what the crossing and yes and do some 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 other work there. It's looking so, fantastic. That back of City Hall. Beautiful. Yeah, and I also wanted to ask uh, um, Paul, the photographer, who's been working with us on the to, so we have you know both the before and after shots on nice. that that would be something we want nice. i think it's important that we reflect in what we do on the transition plan and the update of some of these things that, that really the the changes and not just indicating things here the deficiencies so at end of the month is that when it's projected we're hoping completed? What did you say? Well, I was just saying that, that they didn't do a great job of signage. So when I went over to the annex a couple of weeks ago, we, it looked like for all intents and purposes that the annex where you pay the, the bills, the collection bills, uh, was closed. And you know, it's not a good idea to go all the way around and up the stairs. Uh, and they told me that they had a lot of people that were confused about whether the building was open. I do, and that, that's the one thing to take out of debriefing here, is that in actual preparation for construction around public structure, more thought needs to be given into both, you know, routing so that you have access during the process, and also signage and, right. and information. Right, and you're right, Joe, because I had residents complaining, they want to go pay their bill, right. they had no access. A parking, they didn't know how to get into the building. They were closed. They right. Like there was nobody there. I was peering through from Main Street. <laughs> and I went into City Hall. I went all the way around, you know. And, it might have to and then, right anyways, there. I had residents say, Councilor, tell the mayor, you know, how we get the calls for emergencies and so forth and the robocalls. I mentioned it to the mayor at City Council. It still has not been done. People are having difficulties. There isn't an elevator. You park in the back of the building. You park in the back of the building. Okay. You come in through that back side door. On the first floor, there is an elevator, which will bring you right up on the third floor to pay your bills. They're not told this. I've never seen the elevator. And this is in the annex? The annex, yeah, where you pay your uh, electric bill, utility. The municipal building. Parking tickets. Yeah. The municipal building. They have okay. to go around the back, and it's a problem. Yeah, especially if they come up there to see the sign, but now they have to go back. Exactly. 
<laughs> right. But you can you can take the long way and go down the ramp, or you can go down those steep stairs. <laughs> That's true. So how should we properly address this one again through the mayor? Yes, and I would say our concerns are hearing from residents about transparency, total communication, and how they are going to go ahead and represent all the residents in the city of Northampton or Florence who come to pay their bills. I think number one is that transparency and communication. They make phone calls when there's an emergency or you cannot park your cars or whatever to make those phone calls. What do they call it, Judith? Robot calls, right? Yeah. To everybody's home to let you know how you can ask us to pay your parking fees, your taxes, and your entrance of coming into that municipal building or whatever building it's going to affect. I've had a lot of complaints. So both sided and some kind of communication. Yes. Yeah, we, we get it all the time, and you know, even for those of us that have our own wells, about water right. and water exactly. all the time. Right, exactly. And then it. again, we can use our water again. That's a good idea to let yes. us know that. Right. That's Everybody. An easy, an easy, easy yeah. fix for them to yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. They may, may have put, I don't know if they put something in the paper, but. It's they, awful. I have many, many yeah. residents who are upset. I just made another phone call this morning. Okay. Follow up on that and, and again, for all future projects um, related to public buildings or public facilities, how to basically prepare the accessibility, both communications, signage, and, 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 the robot and calls. accessible routes. That's important. Oh. The calls are very important. If they can do it for parking and you can't park on a snow night, that's important for people, no matter who you are. Disabled wheelchairs break right down. Right. Awful. I agree to that. I think that was Thank an oops oversight. No. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. You can make a record. Jeez. Next on our, our list. Um, Stafro says uh, has asked to uh, present a workshop on the uh, ABLE Act in I believe September. They're doing a couple of workshops around the, the valley. This is a piece of federal legislation that allows families to um, set aside some money. They get some tax advantage to um, some savings process. Um, for costs associated um, with a family member's disability. And it's not a piece of legislation that I understand, so I inherently think it would then be useful to have a session over here. But Joe Tringali, the uh, Community Services Director, um, would uh, contact and schedule um, for me if the, if the dates are available in September that we work for. Do you know what the dates are that you're looking at? No, uh, because they have to schedule. If they're just looking for a day. I think it would be excellent if we could have it here. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. And were we supposed to have a, Chris, are we supposed to have a cop and come and talk to us about next, next uh, month? Yep. Okay. Not just any cop, the police chief. The police chief. Oh, yeah, I think I met him because I think he forgot. Oh, it's a girl. Oh. She. <laughs> so that that is our agenda today. Or is there is there any new business? Any other? The Academy of Music. Taken up by hmm? the Academy of Music. Well, we already we mentioned that the system listening at the Academy of oh, Music. Okay. That it's uh, um, what we added in is this interest in having it be that any systems purchase be compatible so that uh, the multiple receivers in particular could be shared across systems. But and yes, we do want to we do want to move forward on that one. I have one question. Because three of us counselors are submitting that resolution Thursday night at City Council and you can't be there. And it's too bad because I would love either you or Judith or anybody from the commission to come in and full support of the resolution. My question is, seeing pictures 
of children being placed in a cage, how do you know they're disabled or what? How and if they weren't this? when you put them in, they are when you take them off. Do you believe this? <laughs> exactly. That's just disgusting trauma. Yeah, it's it trauma. It don't talk to do that. Trauma can stay with you forever. It's not like it's trauma. It's like hospice. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye